Today is Friday, June 4th. Welcome to episode 18 of Fish Wrap TV. I'm your host, Janie Hansen, filming live here in Blue Earth, Minnesota, as usual with Hugh Lair for your weekly market update. Up top today is the wheat market, followed by corn, ethanol, hogs, and then wrapping up with today's jobs report and the latest on the housing market. Okay, starting with wheat. Hugh? Well, this has been the first time, uh, the first episode that we've let off with wheat. And it's probably going to be dominant here for the next month or two. So it started with beans, and we had corn for quite a while, and, and now wheat is, has stepped to the front. And Sybil, as we call her, is is going to dominate the summer, it looks like, yet again. Uh, we, we had a, a, a intensification of the drought in North Dakota right in the heart of the top corn belt, I mean, for the spring wheat belt, sorry, uh, up there and in Saskatchewan and Alberta. So a lot of this spring wheat crop is under enormous stress right now. And we've got, uh, even though it's, it's relatively early in the ground, um, spring wheat usually uh, harvest about August, you know, mid-August. So we're, we're, we're a little bit early if you think about it in terms of corn crop. So it, it's under stress right now. Uh, spring wheat is not like winter wheat. Mm-hmm. So uh, winter wheat likes hot weather and very dry. Okay. Spring wheat needs moisture and, and more of more of this the you know what corn and beans need <laughs> a little more air conditioning exactly <laughs> so but uh, wasn't spring wheat under chicago wheat earlier this year yes and absolutely th- this is the story it is they are absolutely taking these people to the woodshed uh minneapolis spring wheat was trading under chicago it just hit one dollar and 25 cent today uh over wow so and it was 40 over four sessions ago so it's put 80 cents on in four sessions so i mean it's been 20 cents <laughs> rocking and rolling boom boom <laughs> boom so they are really getting after these people um it's got everybody scared shit less because after what happened 2008 with spring wheat when it just took off to the moon hmm. and wh- what we've got to look for is you know we've we're looking very very intently at, at how 1998 folded out uh, the, the, all the young traders are talking about 2012 it's just like dudes you got no idea 2012 drought ended August 21st. This drought ended July, July 1st. So 88 was just like, uh, like what we got going on here. It depends on the intensity and depends on on the uh, carryout. Uh, the crop that year went from about 400 million expectation to 180 in spring wheat 1988. Oh, wow. So we're looking at about a 50 percent drop in production at worst. So it's one of those things where it. 2008 is, is like the nightmare scenario for everybody where spring wheat just exploded mm-hmm. and you just couldn't find it anywhere. So what we're going to watch for coming up here, and this, this is a tip for all you young traders, is that if we start seeing a protein run, we will start seeing Kansas City lift off because okay. uh, we have got an epic crop in Kansas City right now. And they're sitting there saying, well, you know, Kansas City's made. It's not going to be worth anything. But if we have a protein run, and we've got dry weather right now, this protein is going to come out high in Kansas City, which could balance this off. So it's extremely technical. This is where wheat trading gets so difficult because, you know, beans have, you know, meal and oil, which is difficult enough. But when you're playing protein, okay. you know, from the northern tier plains to the central tier, it gets extremely difficult. And all of a sudden you see trains moving up a dollar in the basis just like that so is that to to blend to get the right protein exactly. level for the product so if you need 14 percent protein if you can put 14 percent hard wheat in it you're going to do it so especially if it's just a protein mix so it, it's really going to be interesting and we finally cleared out the decks in wheat and uh, this is going to be an interesting year so we're going to be talking about wheat first every day <laughs> every <laughs> every friday for the for the next month at least until at least some serious rain hits up there so you'll be back in your element i'm back in my element <laughs> this this is this is my hometown yeah so uh speaking of the dry weather is that affecting the corn market it is the the, the corn market has bounced back strong however corn was in a bit early we had a bit of a, a, a chilly spring if you remember mm-hmm. And what that means is that the growing degree days need to be ramped up. So this is exactly what it needs. Now, you know, it's also going to force the corn to put down roots. So it's, it's going to be seeking out water. So that means it's going to be, you know, strongly, you know, more strongly into the soil. Without getting too much into the, the agronomy, I'll leave that to you guys out there. <laughs> but what we know is, is that we, we're catching up on these growing degree days. We will be concerned if, if another seven to ten days, it's, we still got this heat. 
Yeah, with, without, we need a drink of water. We need a drink of water. Mm -hmm. But still, the heat is, is a problematic thing in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, corn is really getting interesting. Um, ethanol continues to run because crude oil has now broken up to 69 and a half to 70. And this is where they're beginning to think this may turn all the markets over. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, the market cannot handle 70 to 75 degree crude oil at this stage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the lumber and the housing and everything else going on, if we have 70, $75 uh, crude oil, that's going to make everybody in Saudi Arabia happy. But, mm -hmm. you know, $4 gasoline is going to, they're, they're just going to have a riot in, in the yeah. United States here. So, you know, especially since it was buck 80, not even 10 months ago, mm -hmm. a gallon. So, but of course, ethanol is going with that. And of course, on the biodiesel side, our friend soybean oil just keeps going after it. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's again, the tale of two charts, you know, bean oil and then bean meal. Uh, you think they would go together, but they're starting to look very, very different now. And, you know, caught in the middle is so the soybean itself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's running up a bit because in sympathy with spring wheat, because, you know, there is nothing in the world, if you're a trader, than a protein market. Okay, I can tell you that for a fact. Because um, like in 88 and 2008, when, when we had a protein run, you know, you cannot replace it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, the 44, 48% protein beans and, and the 14 to 16% to protein in spring wheat are just irreplaceable mm -hmm. if, if we lose a bunch of it. So, you know, corn is like, what, 6, 7% protein, if, if even that. So, you know, it's it's really where do you get protein if, if these if these sources dry up? Yeah. So the pull in the in the wheat market will start gravity. You know, yes. Yeah. And you know we've had big bean markets that have drawn up spring wheat because you know it's it's just a there's just this gravity with protein mm -hmm. that uh, you know we're going to figure that out with math at crop I guarantee <laughs> we'll figure that out. But it's a good thing you're good at arithmetic. <laughs> well, I, yeah, it's going to be arithmetic and lots of it. So and later algebra, but we'll, <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> Details. <laughs> But it's stuff we feel as traders. And, but yet, what it's done is it's, it's continued to draw these markets higher into what I call real dangerous territory. Mm -hmm. um, the stock market, I mean, you got to be, I'm sorry, you just got to be nuts to be buying stocks, 34,000. But yet, it looks like it's going even higher. Yeah. But, but yet, well, there we go. Somebody just graduated high school. Yep. <laughs> Big in, weekend here coming in Blue up. Earth. Yeah. So, the parade is starting. Yeah, good luck with them. But uh, anyway, you know, with, with the the crude oil and everything else pulling up, because everybody doesn't realize that the real dynamic problem is a rising crude oil market mm -hmm. in an economy, because it it fuels everything, you know, from your car to nail polish. Mm -hmm. And you know, when it goes up like this, you know, from thirty, forty a barrel to seventy, you know, it, it's essentially a hundred percent move in less than a year. And it, it just ripples through the economy in, mm -hmm. in a very bad way. And of course, speaking of that, the housing market or the housing yeah. deal, mm -hmm. we're starting to see housing roll over a bit, uh, struggling. And you say, but houses are going up. Absolutely, the houses are going up. You know, Case Shiller, 13% rise year over year for, for housing mm -hmm. in America. You know, anybody who says there's a 3.1% CPI is out of their minds. Everybody knows it's more like 10. Yeah. So, and the, um, you know, what's that, is that correlated with the jobs report that came out today? Yes. Yeah. We're starting to see bifurcation in the jobs market. And what I mean by that is there, there are people who are just sitting, still sitting out there taking government stuff and you see what help one signs all over the place. And you got, you got actually restaurants in certain parts of the country that are only going to be open like five, six, seven, eight hours because they can't put a double shift on. Yeah. They don't have enough staffing. Exactly. To and so a, a lot of states, what they're doing is they're saying, okay, we're not taking this supplemental unemployment from the government, 300 bucks a week, whatever, for everybody. And they're forcing people back into the job market. So we, we did have a 600,000 number, mm -hmm. you know, this week, but they were looking for 750. Okay. So, so it was you know, about 150 uh, miss. Another 150 mm -hmm. miss. Of course, nothing like last month's, which was the epic one. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the, the job market is, is starting to show signs of weakness, believe it or not. Uh, there are open jobs, mm 
mm-hmm. but it's like who's who is going to fill them and who's going to to get in this job market so that's why i'm saying i've never seen anything like this i mean i've been around for a lot of years mm-hmm. and then people you know with vaccinations and stuff the economy starting to open up some more people either going back to work or saying actually i don't want to do that commute and go back to the office there are people ready for this there are people who are quitting their jobs rather go back to the office mm-hmm. because they think they can get another job and, and do it from home. Yeah, to work remotely. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is what you and I have been talking about with the 21st century is, is that there, there is something afoot here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people think that, you know, the coronavirus was a bad thing. And, of course, it was. But yet... What it did is it showed that we actually had the technology. Yeah, it accelerated some of those trends to be able to utilize the internet and and the technology to work remotely. So it's changing those workforce dynamics. Right, Zoom, Teams, and Jira. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got you've you've had the tools for the last two years to actually do Mm -hmm. this, and now we we were forced to find them. Yeah, you know, push you off the deep end into the swimming pool. That's right. right. (laughs) Jump in, or that you know that ten meter board. Just push you off. Yeah. (laughs) Once you hit the water, wow, wasn't so bad. (laughs) Yeah. So, but yeah, and other things in the economy, lumber prices have finally broken off a little bit. They've broken off a bit. Actually, today, shocker, lumber was down limit. Mm-hmm. So what it means is that people are just saying, you know, you know, the, the F word to them. Saying, We're not buying these. <laughs> yeah, I'm done building. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> yeah. And that's another thing with, with the housing market is, is, you know, you're seeing new construction has fallen off, mm-hmm. obviously, yeah. um, and, and so forth. So you know, these prices are going to work their way into this economy. And, you know, economics one-on-one, high prices will cure high prices, guaranteed. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be painful here in the mid, you know, in this mid-session trying to get this figured out. Yeah. So aside from lumber, are the other, you know, like copper and, and other things like that staying pretty steady? Copper keeps going. Uh, they, they think that there is a, a play in EV with those. And what I mean by EV is electronic vehicles. And, you know, everybody is, is trying to make a play with this thing. They're even trying to open up some old... Uh, mines of uh, you know rare earths that we need for this stuff you know cobalt and and some of these that are weird mm-hmm. um, you know metals that we need in in our little iPhones I mean and the thing is you only need like a tenth of an ounce in one of these mm-hmm. but you got 100 million of them yes <laughs> so everybody's got one in their pocket now <laughs> exactly so and of course the lithium for the lithium ion batteries and so forth and so on so you know there, there's lots of interesting things going on but at the end of the day you know, what is going to be in these, these vehicles that, mm-hmm. that everybody seems to want now. Because, mm-hmm. you know, even you and I are looking at, you know, full electric vehicles as opposed to, you know, half hybrids, whatever they call them. Mm-hmm. So, so what should we be looking for in the coming week? Well, the coming week, uh, you know, next week we've got uh, no reports per se. Uh, you know, we've got WASD coming up week after, which is going to mm-hmm. be huge. Uh, the next week has got to be weather. I mean, if, if this thing intensifies in North Dakota... It is going to be game on in, in wheat. Mm-hmm. And I mean, when I mean game on, it's just like, I don't know where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, the, the frames are, you know, pretty solid this year. But, you know, if, if this thing burns up, you know, you're going to have to really put, put a number up there to get this thing, you know, figured out. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so with the corn bouncing back a little bit, you've got another opportunity to hedge. Um, and, you know, hogs are still trading over over cattle yes yeah. yes and mm-hmm. i mean that thing just you know that's it's got everybody baffled um, mm-hmm. but of course you see the numbers that china's buying but at the end of the day you know how long can this stay here and if you were a hog producer you know that's what is really interesting i mean we're gonna have to get crop in hogs to figure this thing out to see if mm-hmm. there's any kind of play because um you know if you think about it, you could have bought all of your corn like with a three in front of it yes to feed your hogs and then they went all the way to, you know, all the way up. Mm-hmm. Now they're trading over cattle, for God's sakes. So now what do you do? So, you know, they only trade a year and a half in futures, unlike corn, which they trade four, four years. Mm-hmm. So there's only a year and a half where they're, you know, you may have opportunities next year. But the question is, you know, can we you know, figure out something to help farmers do with, with these super high prices? Yeah, to figure out those relationships. Yes. So for those of you who are Croptimize Pro subscribers, stay tuned for our Croptimize Hedge Report to hear what insights the model delivered this week. If you're not yet a subscriber, you can learn more and sign up at thefarmcfo.com. Thanks for tuning in for this week's market update. We'll see you next week. (laughs) 